Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn, and today I want to talk about INFJ's classic cognitive functions. NI, FE, TI, and SE. These are said to be four dominant mental processes, four conscious mental processes in the INFJ arsenal. When you look at it, there's a classic cognitive function hierarchy proposed by John Beebe and later interpretations of Carl Jung's works. In these, we argue that the NI, the dominant function, is uh, working at a hundred percent or eighty percent rate, while FE is working at a fifty or sixty percent rate, and while TI is working at a thirty-five or a fifty percent rate, and SE is working at a fifteen percent rate. This is, however, all wrong. Strength of cognitive function use is more driven by development than by personality type. And what you get is a lot of INFJs tend to use their TI more than what is normal in an INFJ, while other INFJs use their FE a lot more than what is normal. There are even subtypes that use SCE to an unusually high extent. So if you would paradise these four cognitive functions and place them into stereotypes, the NI function would be the lonely uh, crazy hermit FE would be the people pleasing, uh, soft spoken harmony seeker. TI would be the sarcastic uh, science junkie who sits alone and works on his computer programming software. The SE function would be the crazy daredevil who goes out and parties and works hard and plays hard. So INFJs are supposed to exist in a spectrum within these four kinds of functions. However, I don't think so. My interpretation suggests that INFJs have four dominant processes that work and sometimes conflict with one another. NI, working with FI, working with FJ, working with NJ. Four distinct cognitive processes dictated by our need for intuition, feeling, introversion and judging in sync with or in internal conflict with one another. So the dominant function is uh, in a personality hacker perspective contrasted with the car model. The dominant function is seen as the driver. The auxiliary function is seen as the co-pilot, the tertiary function is seen as the 10-year-old, and the fourth function is seen as the 3-year-old. In particular, you could basically describe the inferior function as the baby, the tertiary function as the angsty and rebellious teenager, the auxiliary function as the demanding good parent or perhaps a partner or somebody who works with us and tells us what we should or ought to do that is the right good thing. The dominant function finally occupies what we call is, as our personality type. You know, what we see as ourselves, what we identify with. People can say a lot of things about us. They can say, wow, you're so smart. They can say, oh my God, you're such an idiot. You know, people can tell us a lot of things about ourselves. Like, oh, you're very good with people or, oh, you're very good with computer software or, oh my, you're so good at sports or martial arts. But what really makes us feel seen and heard is in the realm of the dominant function. This is our driver. This is what we value and appreciate and love to do. So it plays a core role in our personality and how we identify. When we are t uh, talked about for our ability to see and read people or for our ability to take on other people's perspectives, we feel understood and truly seen and truly accepted. But when we are instead complimented on, for example, our abilities or our accuracy or our skill at computer software programming or at uh, chess games or board games we might instead feel that uh, we are not understood at all or we are not really appreciated within who we are so we can work at our inferior or tertiary function but often these two tend to act as a form of resistance against the self we tend to perceive the dominant uh, 
function as the savior or the inferior function as the demon <laughs> so uh, the manifestation is so the inferior is constantly trying to destroy my life I would all I want to do is go along uh, on my own to a cottage by a waterfall and meditate all my days but life demands me to do this and that and that and that life is constantly putting things on my shoulder things to do things to deal with there are there is a desire to constantly take in and deal with what is happening in front of you there is a deal there is a problem with fitting in in nature and dealing with your body and with your kinesthetic experience you know of what is happening in the here and now there is also an issue of not feeling seen and of not feeling heard uh, typically when extroverted sensing is your inferior function you experience that you are invisible you tend to experience that people don't listen to you you tend to feel that people don't understand you this is because uh, a person who is constantly day-to-day -day practicing extroverted sensing is always on people they're always on 100% with their energy here I am this is what I think this is what I believe this is what I think is nice this is what you should do this is what is good this is what is bad and they're often very concrete and very visceral and very literal with how they express themselves and how they communicate they make vivid wide guess gestures they involve everyone they make examples they say this thing right here that person right there but the introverted intuitive function instead encourages us to detach and to distance ourselves. And in that process of distancing yourself, you might feel disconnected from other people and from relationships and from friends and from family and from the community as a whole. Introverted intuition can feel like the most lonely cognitive process of them all because of its desire to turn back or to take some distance from a situation to understand the bigger picture one when you ask to take distance or when you ask for privacy or for a room of your own to think or to sit by yourself you are also telling other people you don't value their company or that you don't want to be with them and in this you are building disconnection an extroverted sensing type on the other hand is constantly on and is constantly on people and uh, what the extroverted sensing type instead deals with is people think I'm too much, people say I'm too loud, people constantly tell me to tone it down. But for the INFJ it's rather the other way around. It's can you speak louder? Sorry I don't understand what you're saying. Can you explain that? Can you give an example? What it is? What is it exactly you mean? Could you talk, talk faster? Could you be more on? Could you be there at that time? Could you stay that long? Could you take some time working on this and uh, can you sit down and have a meeting with us for two hours to explain how this works but often uh, INFJ works from introverted intuition and that's how you primarily recognize the INFJ from introverted intuition extroverted feeling is uh, what the, you would call the good conscience of the INFJ it's uh, what we are encouraged to do and what we are most appreciated for and uh, it is what we do in order to get appreciation and acceptance from other people INFJs are not inherently going to fit in anywhere they are not dominant extroverted feeling types they are not able to place themselves in the middle of the community in a part of the community they are not able to constantly adjust to the social expectations around them. They struggle with the social contracts that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, shake hands with people, give them a hug, give them three kisses on the cheek before you leave, say congratulations, say thank you, say wow, nice work, you know, appreciate people, build teams, sit down and have fun together have team building activities meet up together schedule fun times you know make yokes you know ask people about their private lives INFJs are not extroverted feeling types and it's incorrect to call us such instead we have auxiliary or co-pilot extroverted feeling and that means it is a big driver of growth and it's something that INFJs always constantly trying to improve on something they recognize is an important thing 
but something that they struggle to de develop and deal with and explain to other people. They come from instead the perspective of introverted feeling first. An introverted feeling is introspective, it is steep, it is nuanced, it is sensitive, it is profound. So often when the INFJ goes up to explain themselves to other people and when they put themselves out there and when they engage in team building activities, Unlike the ENFJ, they are not comfortable in this environment, but rather they feel sensitive or exposed or vulnerable in these situations. The INFJ feels vulnerable one, when they are forced to put themselves in a group with people to be judged by other people on the basis of our character or our behavior or how we appear to other people. Often we can do it and we can be very good at it and we can learn to do it But there is often a crash and what you see commonly with the auxiliary functions are that we engage in them but at some point we become overwhelmed by them or we start to feel a bit exposed the more we engage in them the more exposed we feel it's like It's like uh, you know truly putting yourself out there and exposing yourself to potential risks and dangers and heartbreak and hurt and all those things. So what happens is the INFJ as they do this, they are constantly picking up on emotions just like other introverted feeling types. We are absorbing other people's emotions. Introverted types have this thing going on in which everything they take on and absorb from their environment tends to get stuck inside. And when it's stuck inside, it is hard to share and talk about with other people. How do I tell other people that I'm struggling with this? How do I share with people that I'm having a bad day? How do I let people know when things are difficult for me? I feel upset watching people suffer or to see people go through it. But how do I tell them this? How do I express myself? How do I talk about these things? So... Uh, there comes a need to take distance from other people or to once again detach or distance yourself to understand what it is you are feeling in these situations. There is a fear of uh, going too far out and there is a feeling that you know when you extrovert and when you use your extroverted functions that you are going too far out, that you are too much, that you are too on and that you're starting to make mistakes. So what tends to happen is you start feeling like, you start feeling this, uh, you know, uh, not in the moment social anxiety always, but often the backlash of social anxiety afterwards of, oh, that person is probably upset with me now. I probably said something I shouldn't have. What if I did something stupid? And there's uh, auxiliary FB at its finest. And um, I think INTJs and INFPs, uh, INTPs have the biggest issues with this, actually. So, tertiary TI is also interesting to talk about. And the tertiary TI is like the angsty, sarcastic, rebellious teenager of our cognitive weaponry or mental prowess. So, often what you can see with the with these kind of functions are like when a function is of the same attitude as the dominant for example introverted or for example judging in its nature what we see is uh, we feel very comfortable using this function we feel we can use these functions effortlessly and with ease but uh, often these functions act with contrary values to our dominant or with contrary interests to our dominant. So these functions are skeptical, they are uh, more critical, they are more pessimistic, they are more negative, they are more sarcastic. Um, if uh, the dominant function in the auxiliary acts as a positive or encouraging influence of you can do it and just try, just put yourself out there, just have hope. The tertiary and the inferior work as the doom and gloom pessimism of oh I hate this, this sucks, this is never gonna work, this is terrible, this is so bad. Often what I can experience uh, as an INFJ with introverted thinking is uh, well this uh, 
constant critical thinking, uh, this burning sensation of everything being wrong. Every approach I try is wrong, every video I do is uh, off the mark, nothing gets close enough, nothing is good enough, nothing is accurate enough. There were things I said that I shouldn't have, there were missteps, there were things that didn't go the way they were supposed to. So often what you can associate with this function is a uh, degree of procrastination or laziness or rebelliousness. Uh, this function can uh, act as an encourager to not try, to save energy, to relax, to do things more easily or more effortlessly. You know, Dave Superpowers, he says that uh, um, this function in particular for the INFJ is like the sleep function. So... Uh, a person who uses this function a lot has a lot of sleep energy. Basically what this means is they are constantly preserving their energy, constantly relaxing, constantly uh, discouraging themselves from action. And that also means they don't have to do anything. There is nothing to aspire to, nothing worth doing, nothing that is meaningful enough. So there is no video to make, there is uh, nothing happening, there is just you and your thoughts and your critical thoughts telling you not to do anything and to just keep thinking about it forever. And you do this because it's easy and effortless. I told you introverted functions for an INFJ are easy to use, effortless for use. So I call them autopilot functions. I see them as, you know, uh, I see them just habitually taking us in their grip, you know, just uh, we don't even recognize when they're starting to take us over or how it happens. Uh, the dominant and inferior functions, we note this every day, they're constantly on and they're very easy to recognize. The dominant represents, you know, that high of flow and energy and stability and control and confidence and power. The inferior represents that pressure and stress of deadlines and things that need to be done and heavy things that you have to deal with, traumas, bad experiences, anxieties. So the dominant and the inferior, they're very easy to use, but the tertiary, the autopilot function, that one just takes over and we don't even recognize when it has taken over. Often it's associated with a grip or a loop, you know, a spiral, you know, you have those ENFPs that constantly make bad decisions under TE influence, basically. Um, they get hardcore, they get pushy, they start to say things they shouldn't have, they uh, start making bad decisions, they uh, rationalize the, ba the ba worst <laughs> decisions possible. Uh, but for the INFJ it is, you know, uh, self-absorption at its finest. It's, uh, you know, with... Extroverted thinking, it's I have a hundred reasons to do something, but with introverted thinking, it's I have one reason to do something. It's my reason that I've thought of that I, defines me, that defines what I think and why I do what I do. So with introverted thinking, it is stubbornly clinging to an argument or to a rule or to some kind of uh, principle that is keeping you from being happy. You know, there's a, everyone has that, you know, uh, okay everyone has a principle that they are sticking to that is keeping them from being happy. So every INFJ has this uh, law, overarching law, you know, we love laws, uh, we're judging types, uh, that define why we do what we do and uh, why we like what we do and uh, how we do things. So Basically, this law can be, you know, something we refuse to do because it's our principles, because it is a definition of who we are, because uh, uh, we, it has become, you know, a version of ourselves. And everyone has this, you know, version of themselves. Everyone has this thing they cling to. So uh, the introverted function and especially the introverted uh, values functions like introverted thinking or introverted feeling represents this uh, credo or overarching guideline or value system that we use to define if we are good or bad people. So often the comforting part of this function is it makes us feel like we are good people. We never say anything that's wrong, we're uh, never incorrect, we never break our dominant principles, so we can take pride in that. But nothing also ever happens and so there is no progress, no 
development of value, no, nothing to learn, nothing to improve on, nothing to expand on. So there is also a constant feeling like we're not doing enough. So when you talk about the baby function, you know, the inferior function, extroverted sensing, you can get the image of uh, you know, something we do when we lash out, you know. Imagine this, when we're in flow and we have energy and we have control and we have power and we have self-esteem, we are able to engage in our dominant function good and well. We're able to uh, sh develop concepts, theories, ideas, and we're able to uh, see, take on perspectives and get insight and understand things. And we're able to introspect and understand ourselves and we're able to build relationships and diplomacy and to communicate, you know, all those things happen and everything is great. But when uh, the inferior function starts to feel neglected, uh, basically what happens is you can imagine a baby rage meter. And you can imagine this slowly growing. The more you neglect, neglect it, the more it slowly grows. And uh, what happens is... Uh, the more you distance yourself, and I talked about this in the beginning of the video, the more you feel that nobody sees you, nobody hears you, nobody understands you, nobody gets you. So you're doing the right thing, you're acting in accordance with your dominant purpose or moral principles, you're acting in accordance with your insight and what you believe and what you've seen and what you've come to understand through introspection, detachment and insight. Uh, but the baby rage meter is starting to grow because uh, you don't feel seen, you don't feel heard, uh, you feel that nothing you do is right, you feel that nobody's ever happy with you, everyone thinks everything you do is always wrong, everyone is always so critical of you, the system doesn't care, the laws are against you, the system is against you, you know. Uh, you're starting to feel all that pressure and all that unresolved anxiety of the inferior. And you can see here that the inferior acts as a negative uh, influence. It's everything. If the flow function represents our do's, the inferior function represents our don'ts. Everything we don't want, everything we want to avoid, everything we find to be difficult. So when we're talking about introverted intuition, it's all uh, understand, seek understanding, seek wisdom, seek in insight, take on perspective. It's all do, 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 do introverted intuition. But with extroverted sensing, it's all don't, 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 don't. And it's uh, don't do this, don't express your body or what you experience, don't uh, uh, listen to other people, don't speak out for yourself, don't uh, shout when people don't hear you, don't raise your voice, uh, don't take space to yourself, uh, don't stretch out your arms too wide, don't make too much noise around yourself. Uh, don't say things too literally, don't get too concrete, don't give too many examples, you know, keep things, you know, where things are comfortable, keep them vague, keep them open-ended, intuitive, loose, abstract, so that you can get insight and understanding and awareness. And uh, when all those stones are leaving you starved or feeling invisible or disconnecting you from your relationships or from your peers or partner or friends or family that's when the baby rage meter starts to grow and that's you know what causes us to lash out and uh, to overindulge in extorted sensing um, Dave Superpower says there's a tidal wave that comes to us and takes us over um, personality hacker illustrates it as uh, you know uh, something we have to take care of and clothe and feed and nurture carefully you know uh, we can't overstimulate the, the baby function or the three-year-old we can't put too much on its shoulders we can't expect too much of ourselves you can't force yourself to be constantly on for other people so you need to portion your attention you need to prioritize your relationships and friends and who you talk with and you don't have to pressure yourself to be too on for other people or to be too loud or to be too active but you should have some activity you do once a week like maybe you go to martial art practice maybe you go out in nature 
maybe you get some time to engage in extroverted sensing in a relaxing and normal and healthy degree, healthy enough to make your uh, three-year-old feel accepted and understood and nurtured, not enough to make it feel pressured or overwhelmed or pushed and not too little to make it feel invisible and lost and ignored and unimportant. So basically uh, what you learn is, yeah, you don't need the whole society to understand what you're saying. You don't need everyone to watch your videos. You don't need uh, all the people you meet to care about what you're thinking about. But you do need those special relationships and bonds, you know, those that uh, those close friendships uh, with some people that you can be real with and that get your energy and that get your attention and you do need to talk about you know those things such as energy thieves you know people that suck your energy people that use you people that manipulate you people that uh, emotionally extort you for various reasons and you do need to make sure that you think about who do I want to be on for how much do I want to be on what is comfortable for me so with inferior function we have to learn to be comfortable with it with the three-year-old, Personality Hacker encourages us to think in terms of play. Use the three-year, sorry, use the tertiary function, the ten-year-old, for play. You know, for fun activities, for a sense of humor, you know. Instead of constantly worrying about being wrong, you know, uh, learn to develop a sense of humor in which you can laugh at mistakes and you can uh, see the fun in, uh, you know, problem solving and you can uh, use it as a relief or as a temporary escape, you know, or to refresh yourself or to relax or to let loose. What you can see with the auxiliary function is it can become a really heavy shackle. It can be very much a pressure on your shoulders. Uh, what I see with the auxiliary function or with extroverted feeling in the INFJ is it becomes, you know, like shackles of heavy outside externalized morals. Uh, everyone else's values and the values of the community and the beliefs, the prevalent norms, social expectations can become like shackles on the INFJ or a heavy, heavy thing to carry on your back. So you also have to make sure it doesn't, the auxiliary function doesn't kill your humor, or doesn't make you too serious, or makes you too focused on proving yourself. What you can see is you can become too obsessed with proving yourself to other people, or constantly showing other people how good you are, or how moral you are, or how right you are, because that can also keep you from being vulnerable, and from showing people, yeah, you have flaws, and yeah, you make mistakes, and yeah, you have your issues as everyone else does. So these are the four classic cognitive functions of the INFJ. But as I said in this video earlier, INFJs stretch beyond that. The INFJs need to understand also the functions outside of this, such as introverted feeling, such as feeling judging, such as intuitive judging, the visionary function, and that call to independence, as well as their inferior functions and their other auxiliary or tertiary functions, such as introverted sensing, uh, or extroverted thinking or yeah extroverted intuition especially extroverted intuition that's a really interesting one so I hope this video helped you understand the INFJ from the classic perspective I hope it encourages you to not think in those traditional levels where you have this much NI that much FE that much TI and that you instead sit and write down how much NI do I have how much FE do I have how much TI do I have personally? Which functions have I developed more than others? How, I, how am I treating my inner child? How am I dealing with my 10 year old? How am I dealing with my co-pilot? You know, how am I living up to my own personal dominant flow? How able am I to step into and trust myself and to build self-esteem and confidence in myself? How able am I to find energy and joy and passion and motivation? in feeling. So that's the INFJ cognitive functions. If you like this video, leave a like down below and share this video with other INFJs that need to hear this. And visit patreon.com slash ericdor to leave a donation or to support me if you have time, if you have money. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.